Hello everybody, I'm Hoarder Gamer, and um, basically I'm going to be talking about comic books that are going to be coming out on Wednesday. And these are books I'm probably going to be reviewing, for sure I'll be picking up, and um, if you have any suggestions, feel free to let me know if there's any books you think I should look at or anything. Now, usually every week it's like, okay, what do you guys think of this? And I just started this, so it's only the second week. The only thing is... It's a very packed week when it comes to books because there's some huge titles coming out and they're kind of definite reads, definite reviews. So it won't be as open where I have like, you know, two openings for other books or something to people to suggest. But please, if you have ideas, let me know. And it's a possibility. And excuse me, I'm sorry about that. Um, possibility I could look at it like next week or like um, next month or something like that too so if you have any suggestions of any other books or anything or suggestions for videos thank you very much okay so we're gonna start today with do 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 diamondcomics.com also known as previews so if you notice there's one piece of information that's pretty interesting on our first page July 4th midnight release approved for all products most comic shops don't open at midnight. That's not a normal thing. However, they did for Superman. And I believe also uh, for Superman, or actually Action Comics 1000 they did. And Superman 800. God, I'm losing my mind. Sorry about that. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 800 they did. A lot of them did. Not every single one. And big book coming out on Wednesday is Batman 50, which is the wedding of Bruce Wayne and Selina Kyle, also known as Batman and Catwoman. That's going to be a huge book. And because of that gigantic thing that this book is, you know, it's not just like a normal comic book. That would just be really kind of limiting what this is. And also because of the 4th of July is Wednesday, um, they basically have it so like at midnight on Tuesday, you can pick up the book. So... And all of the books, actually. So it's not just DC's titles. Because in the past, it's a lot of times how they did it. When Action Comics came out, it was pretty much just the DC titles that were available at the midnight releases. But now, all products. So that's pretty interesting. So let's go to new releases, everybody. <laughs> that was funny. There's no way I could have expected that. Okay. There's some positioning there to begin with just to get the little icon. But um, so here we go. First up, we have Image Comics. And Gravedigger's Union is a pretty interesting book. We have that. Death or Glory number three looks pretty cool. I Hate Fairyland is. Um, An artist I actually have met a number of times and was a friend of a friend, uh, Scotty Young. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Although I have no idea at what point I would jump into that book. I feel like I should just wait for the trades to come out or something. I don't know. I feel like it's so deep in that I don't know where to begin. Because it's not just, as far as I know, I hate Fairyland. There's other spin-off series that he did too. So we have Medieval Spawn Witchblade. That sounds interesting. Witchblade, of course, is connected to uh, the Darkness. If I, recall, if I remember correctly, um, the Angelus, which is the opposite of the Darkness, is daughter of Witchblade, I believe. I might be wrong about that. I apologize if I am. Walking Dead. That's a great book. Let's take a look at that. Now, the reason I'm not going through everything, I'm just sort of kind of, you know, bringing it up briefly, is again, this is a very stacked week for books. Rick leads the Commonwealth's governor, Pamela Milton, on a tour of the various communities Alexandria is aligned with. Naturally, terrible things begin to happen very quickly. That's interesting, because there was a woman who wanted, I believe it was records, and she came in on a helicopter in a recent... Um, episode of The Walking Dead, and uh, her name may have been Pamela, I'm not sure. So that's interesting that the comic book, on some level, is that far with the TV show, 
because the TV show was kind of way behind of, you know, where the comic was. So that's pretty interesting. They must really only be expecting, I think, another two seasons of that show. Plus, uh, supposedly, um, it's not a spoiler because it's kind of widely known. Um, Andrew Lincoln, who plays Rick, is going to be leaving the show. So I really don't know how much further they can go with it, to be honest with you. You know. Okay, let's just go back here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I do hope everyone's having a good uh, night or day whenever you're watching this. It's live during the night, so that's why I said uh, night. See, I brought this up before. For whatever reason, it never goes back where it's supposed to go. It always just moves around. It makes it a little bit difficult to go through books. Okay, so Dark Horse... Let's see. Halo collateral damage. But see, that's two or three. So only three issues total, and it's already an issue two. There's probably some heavy lifting in issue one. I would probably wait until a miniature trade comes out of issues one, two, and three. Halo's big enough where that will probably happen. That would be an issue with some books where that may not happen. Pretty sure it would happen with this. Whoa, Quantum Age from World of Black Hammer. Okay, this is getting insane. Black Hammer is an amazing comic book. And the, like, sequel series, I guess you could say, is out now. And now this looks like a spinoff of the sequel series. And it's issue one. So I'm going to take a look. I want to know if it's the same writer. Son of a gun. Son of a gun. Yeah, Jeff Lemire. He's excellent. He's one of my favorite comic book writers. He did an amazing job with, um, with I believe, Animal Man uh, during the New 52. That's how I got to know who he was. And he's also the writer of Sweet Tooth. He's very good. <laughs> and um, that's that's makes things a little bit difficult. That's a book that I was not expecting. That's four bucks, huh? Yeah, he also writes the Terrifics right now for DC Comics, which is also very good. Okay, let's see here. That takes us to... Does it take it to DC? No, IDW, right? Mm-hmm. Delta 13, number three. I gotta tell you, it's a really cool looking cover. Um, let's take a look at it. Ooh, Steve Niles. Um, 30 Days of Night. Who knows what mysteries lie deep in the asteroid belt? When a mysterious, huge, and previously undiscovered asteroid looms over their ship, a small crew of blue-collar workers discovers a terrifying threat unlike anything they've ever seen. Now, the crew must escape the asteroid, but even if they do, will they be able to escape each other and anything they bring back with them? Ah, damn it, that does sound good. So one issue I have is that this is issue three. So I don't know how easy... One second here. Yeah, I don't know how easy that'll be to get into. Also, I wonder if it's an ongoing or if it's like four issues or something like that. Ghostbusters crossing over, so that's number four, so I don't know if I would take that jump. Joe Hill, The Cape, number one, greatest hits. Uh, I gotta be kind of picky and choosy. It's gotta be something that just screams to me like, you need this in your life. Here we go, everybody. The big kahuna. Batman number 50, okay?
It's the wedding you never thought you'd see. The batrimony is real, as Bruce Wayne and Selena Kyle are set to tie the knot in a can't-miss, extra-length, milestone issue that will reshape Gotham City. All their friends, and a few enemies, will be party to a comic book coupling for the ages. Superstar scribe Tom King officiates the sure-to-be-off-beat nuptials, joined by an all-star lineup of guest classic bat artists doffing their hats to the lucky couple in a series of pre-wedding flashback scenes sure to set the romantic mood. That's interesting. I didn't know that. That makes more sense as to why the issue is uh, $5 rather than 3 or 4 though. I believe Joelle Jones right there um, does Catwoman. Let's see if I know any of these other people besides Tom King. Oh yeah, Neil Adams. That's uh, one of them. Um, wow, old school Batman. 80s. 80s and 90s, I, I believe. Eddie Kubert, yeah. Lee Bermejo is amazing. A, um, basically, his art is, his art is like uh, painted art. He's, been, he's phenomenal. Uh, Mikel Janin is really good, too. He does tons of books. Uh, Frank Miller, of course. That really needs no introduction. Um, honestly, most of those people don't really need an inter introduction if you know comics at all. Um, that's awesome. So there's that cover right there, and that's probably the basic cover. So with Something Visit Big, this event, they have multiple covers, and they expect crazy people to buy all of them. And the average, you know, the average Joe, they expect to, you know, pick one up. I'm the person that uh, would like to get all the covers, but just gets one. And for me, I like this one. It's Jim Lee. And it's a, like a pencil sketch before the colors are done, right there. These are both really good, though. The color and the pencil sketch one. Um, Arthur Adams, that's a nice one too. So I'll probably go either with this one or this one, I'm guessing. Depends how it looks when I actually have it in my hand. Otherwise, maybe that one. Uh, that's basically something you would take to a convention to have an artist do a sketch on the cover. Like your take on Batman and, and uh, Catwoman would be like a really good idea for that cover if you were to get that. That's a really big thing to have the blank covers. Now this is tempting, but you'll see how loaded this week is with comics, which makes it painful. Catwoman number one. Now what's funny is, this is great, the cover's awesome. That, that, that almost makes me want to get it right away because I like how clever the cover is. I do or I don't. Read Batman number 51st. Or I'll spoil the whole thing. And there she is with a copy of Batman 50 in her hand. So she's totally breaking the fourth wall there. Um, also, this is tempting because it's written and the artwork is by Joelle Jones. And um, I actually don't really have a lot by her. So it would be a great like, jumping off point. And a great jumping off point for Catwoman because it's issue one. Plus, I'm guessing this will very tightly connect to Batman. You know because they're going to be married. So it almost might be a must-have bat book. It's very possible. And now we just have to get back to easy. There we go. I love how it does that. Okay, Catwoman 1. Let's see. Deathstroke 33. That's a gorgeous cover, but again, it's a loaded week, so it's not something I would pick up. Oh, that's insane. I didn't even know that was a concept. That Damian Wayne could be uh, Slade Wilson's uh, uh, father. I'm oh, sorry. That Damian Wayne, sorry, couldn't be uh, Slade Wilson's son. That's wild. Hmm. That changes a lot of things. Huh. <laughs> Pretty drastically. Green Arrow has the um, Parasite, one of, them, uh, one of the most dangerous Superman villains. That's pretty cool. Always like two covers too. The big DC books usually have two covers every every uh, month. Let's see, Harley Quinn might have three. 
Oh no, she that's a, a trade paperback. So let's see like Harley Quinn right here. She has this cover. What does this say? Ooh, I, I don't know who Sam Humphreys is. Not the first issue. She broke the fourth wall and now the fourth world. Okay, the Furies and Apocalypse are involved in this. In DC, Apocalypse is a planet. It's not a big guy with, like, hoses coming out of his arms or back. <laughs> with a crazy-looking metal jaw. It's not... It's not that. Okay, so... We're up to Harley Quinn... There we go. This has been, as the kids say, fire. Um, I read Justice League 1 and 2, and I believe I have reviewed both of them. And it's been fantastic. And in the most recent issue, issue 2, uh, Jon Stewart became the Ultraviolet Lantern. And he was given those abilities from Sinestro. So that's pretty interesting. I like that he's on the cover there. And uh, Scott Snyder's writing it, and he's great. And again, this is the best Justice League book I've read in years. I very much like it. So that's something we'll definitely be reviewing. Let's see. We're getting close to the end, everybody. I mean, there's only two or three more books to look at. I plan on doing this every Sunday. Just to give you an idea, and so you can kind of suggest things too. When I, I'm trying to trying to let find things. So Justice League has two covers. Three. Wow. There's a pencil variant one. Okay, that's nuts. I'll probably go with that one though, because it's got John Stewart on it. Man of Steel. So this is the end of a six-parter, and uh, basically there's a uh, villain named Rogal Zar. And uh, once this is over, this goes into, uh, I believe it's the new action, action issue of Action Comics, which I think is 1001, I think. I don't think it goes into Superman. Um, and that might be as soon as next week. I don't know, but it's relatively soon. Let's see, Nightwing, that is an awesome cover, but again, not trying to go crazy here. I love that cover. There have been times where I picked up books just for their cover. That has happened. But it's got to be just an awesome cover. Wonder Woman. Oh, no, that's not an issue. That's just a book. Okay. I was like, as far as I knew, it came out last week. Okay. So this has been nuts. I think it's been an issue every week. So I avoided that siren song. Um... If it turns out to be good, I'll probably end up getting the trade. Astonishing X-Men is very good. Uh, I've read the first seven or eight issues. It's just that I get behind on books. Um, but yeah, it's very good. I'm, I'm very happy with that take on the X-Men. Avengers has been phenomenal. If you're a fan of the Avengers at all, I highly recommend the book. It's been great. There's been something that have always been in the background of the Avengers, known as and well, Marvel comic, known as the Celestials, and now they are almost getting like center stage. So it's been pretty exciting. Let's see here. Now look at this, everybody. This is and was a huge surprise to me too, because I I'm sure I knew about it and then I forgot. Nahisi Cotes is an excellent writer. He's actually a novelist. And he writes Black Panther. Well, he's doing Captain America. Okay. So I'm really looking forward to this. So this is another one of those books on this really stocked uh, week. That's why, again, I unfortunately don't have a lot of openings for books for people to suggest for this week. It is winter in America. For over 70 years, he has stood in stalwart defense of our country and its people. But in the aftermath of Hydra's takeover of the nation, Captain America is a figure of controversy, carrying a tarnished shield, and a new enemy is rising. Who are the power elite? 
and how do they intend to co-opt and corrupt the symbol that is Captain America. And I love the art on the cover. That is gorgeous. It's Alex freaking Ross. So that's really nice. But yeah, I look forward to that. Um, I think the Hisi Kotas is uh, phenomenal. Black Panther has been one of the most interesting and well-written reads uh, that I've had in the last couple of years. It's pretty wild, though, now. I believe it's more like a cosmic book. <laughs> we'll get into that in a moment, actually. Very, very shortly. So there's Captain America. Okay. And we have nothing, you know, nothing too exciting, nothing big, just uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider. Okay, so Cosmic Ghost Rider. It's one of my favorite current writers, Johnny Cates. He also does a really good horror book called Baby Teeth. And he did uh, Thanos Wins, which was an awesome six-issue series that's now in trade paperback. Okay, here we go. Best way to explain this is just to read it. So, exploding from the pages of Thanos, Frank Castle was the Punisher. A deal with the devil made him Ghost Rider. A deal with Galactus made him cosmic. A deal with Thanos made him dead. Not to worry, he's coming back. And he's got a plan to make the universe a better place that's going to lead him into an even crazier adventure than he's ever been in. Join hot new comic and cosmic writer Donnie Cates, Thanos, Doctor Strange. I also forgot Doctor Strange, too. As he pushes his wildest creation past the breaking point. Look at that. Look how insane that cover is. Look how, just think how awesome that like action figure is going to be in a poster or anything. I mean, that is just, and if you're wondering about the poster, are they going to make one? Are they going to make a poster for this awesome cover, if you're wondering about that? Ah, that's awesome. The loading of the uh, page just ruined my momentum right there. So you can blame the, the uh, <laughs> previewsworld.com for that. Here it is. Eight ninety nine. Now the thing that kind of sucks though is if you want the poster, you have to order it. Um, most stores will not get extra posters like at all, no matter how big the store is. It's really rare because like I totally would like that poster right there. Even more so, I want the Venom number one poster. But uh, yeah, that's pretty great. Now there's another book on this insanely stuffed, like a Thanksgiving turkey, Wednesday of comic book releases. Usually it's not this insane. I'll tell you that straight up. So, here we go everybody. Death of the Inhumans. Now what's interesting to me is this kind of resembles Cosmic Ghost Rider. I don't think that's what they're going for, but he just kind of, you know, looks that way to me. The title says it all. Here lie the Inhumans. The Kree have gone murdering, leaving behind a message. Join or die. Thousands of Inhumans have already made their choice. The evidence floats bleeding in space. Black Bolt and his family are next. Rising star Donny Cates and Punisher War Journal artist Ariel Olivetti bring their brutal talents to the Inhumans. Now, what worries me about this book is I feel a lot of people might just not even give it a chance because of the terrible uh, ABC series, The Inhumans, that was on, I believe it was last year. I don't think it was this year. Um, and that was really bad. But that's basically because a TV budget isn't enough money to pull off a good Inhumans TV series. They should have just done a big Hollywood film, which is what they were going to do. Then they change your mind. So, not the best of ideas. The dog's awesome, though. Yeah, if you have a chance to see the eight-episode ABC series, the dog's great. That's one of the few good things I could say. And I don't think it really 
means that you should check it out, you know, just for the dog. This is very tempting, but I'm going to wait on this. This is, I believe, another Donny Cates book, I want to say. Yep, written by Donny Cates. Oh, actually a few people. Nick Spencer. I don't know who Christopher Sabella is, but Nick Spencer did the um, um, Secret Wars 2? No, what was that? What the heck did he do? He did a crazy series with uh, Captain America being part of uh, um, Hydra. I forget the damn name of the book, though. I liked it. I actually did not like Secret Wars 2. Or Civil, I'm sorry, I didn't like Civil War 2. Um, but I did like this one that I'm trying to remember the name of. Maybe maybe it'll say here. Maybe it'll mention Donnie Cates and say, Writer of so-and-so. Oh, I see why. There's all sorts of things in here. So Damnation, the Doctor Strange book, is only four issues. But then you get Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider number one, Doctor Strange 386 through 389. Okay. Iron Fist 78 to 80. And Ben Riley Scarlet Spider 15 through 17. Okay. So that's why that's $35. I was kind of wondering why a four issue trade would be that expensive. I got to be honest with you, I would prefer it being like the 15 or 16 bucks and just be the four issues. That'd probably be more like 12, I think. Because it's usually less expensive to buy the trade than it is buying all the separate issues. Case in point, 19.99 for Thanos wins. And uh, if you bought the issues separately, it's $4 an issue, six issues. So that'd be $24. So you save like four bucks. Plus you get it nice and bound in a book. Okay, so we have Death of Inhumans. What else do we have? Fantastic Four. Oh. Okay. So the Fantastic Four are coming back with a book, but it isn't out yet. Those are just posters for it, I believe. Yeah, that's a huge thing, actually. Immortal Hulk number two. Funny story, this is already sold out. Meaning that the stores and everything, um, they'll have a certain amount, but they basically went through the entire printing. They're already on a second printing of this book. A random small town tragedy, a mystery illness that spreads with grief, a green glow on a lonely mountain, three puzzle pieces that fit together to make a nightmare, and the only mind on earth that can connect them belongs to the immortal Hulk. I read issue one. It was very good. And uh, it's kind of weird, though, because issue one very much seemed like they were going for a horror vibe, and the new Venom book actually does. But that's really not what Immortal Hulk issue one really felt like once I read it. This, again, looks like they're going for a horror vibe, so uh, I'm interested in reading it, but uh, I don't know what it'll actually be like. Also, that writer, his name's L. Ewing, he did an amazing Rocket series, Rocket 1 through 6, um, which was this fantastic, like, heist slash 1930s noir in outer space. It was, it was really good. And it's such a crazy book, because it's not just comic book format. At times, there'll be pages of prose. It's just really wild. Like, not normal panels, just like... You know, a character standing there and then words around them. It just doesn't look and feel like a normal comic book, but it's great. It's very good. Okay, so we have, I didn't even know about Immortal Hulk until just now. So that's that makes this even a more packed and insane week. I might actually have to decide the certain books I'm not even going to get. But I know for sure I have to get Ghost Rider, obviously Batman. And uh, I really want to get... Um, the Inhumans, because I know very little about them, except, you know, that bad show that was on ABC. Let's see, Star Wars. Star Wars has been a pretty strong comic book, I won't lie. It's been pretty good. Let's see here. 
Okay, so that's everything there. DE. I'm not sure what DE is. Hmm. Boom. Here comes the boom, as in here comes the... Jim Henson Beneath Dark Crystal. That sounds interesting. One of 12. Oh my god. 12 issue series. Oh, that's cool. Look at the Black Lightning statue. Ooh, is it based on the show? Yeah, it's pretty much based on a TV show. I like that a lot. Now, I don't have the money to spend $130 on it this Wednesday, but uh, that looks pretty damn cool. Uh, Black Lightning is really good. It's actually on DVD and Blu-ray right now. It might be on um, Netflix as well. It's only 13 episodes. I highly recommend checking it out. It impressed me a great deal. And he's such a, such a good actor. It's like I feel so bad for not knowing who he was before this show. You know how sometimes an actor is so good and you don't know who they are, so you're like, I bet they're British. I bet they're Australian. I bet that's the situation I had with the actor who plays Black Lightning. TMNT Heroclix. I don't even want to see that. I don't even want to know about that. I, I'm going to pretend I didn't see it. Because I very much like the TMNT series, and I do like Heroclix. And I sometimes dabble and pick up a pack here and there, but I really shouldn't even do that, to be honest with you. Okay, Diamond Toys. Com there we go, comics and graphic novels. So this is where all the other studios are, the ones that don't have their own special place. And right now I'm just trying to go through and see if there's any books that I read that are coming out, like Baby Teeth or Heavenly Blues. Oh, the Heavenly Blues is a bit of a nightmare. It's hard as hell to find it in a comic shop. It's nuts. You have to basically go online and find somebody and then have them ship you each issue when it comes out. It's crazy. I would much rather just get it from my shop. And I don't, I'm not too big on the idea of spending the $5 a month to get the previews actual physical guide and then having to go through the guide and like mark everything. Because knowing me, I would get the guide, right? I'd mark it and I'd forget to bring it in by a deadline. That's probably what I would do. Because I know myself pretty well. Okay, so... Let's see here. The biggest company, for me anyway, in this um, collection of, uh, you know, not as big companies... I said that wonderfully, didn't I? Um, is Valiant. Valiant is really good. They have some excellent books. Although nothing that I read that I see right now in this listing here, so maybe nothing this week for Valiant that I'm interested in anyway. I mean, obviously there's a, at least a couple books from Valiant, but not anything that I've noticed. All-Star Batman number one. Was that a Jay Lee cover? Is that why it's so much? $30. Maybe it's signed by him. No, that doesn't make sense. I didn't want to do that. Okay, everybody. Um, that pretty much takes us to the end of this little preview of what comes out on Wednesday. Um, again, all... Together, not too many openings for anything else to put on this list this week. Uh, if you have suggestions, though, either on Twitch or YouTube, feel free to leave me a comment. And, um, you know, I can look at something like next week or the month after or something like that. Or I say that because the book might come out only once a month. And if I can't do it now, I'd have to wait till next month. So, um, some books are every two weeks. Depends on the book. But yeah, thank you all very much for watching. This is the second time I've done this little thing, and I think it's fun. It's uh, usually about a half hour to an hour. We're right around um, 
35, 40 minutes. So, yeah, these are the books. Again, the heavy hitters. Batman number 50. Cosmic Ghost Rider number one. And um, Death of the Inhumans number one. I would also say beyond those, Justice League, because that's been so good. Yeah, Scott Snyder is really kind of knocking out of the ballpark. He's making it an exciting read. Um, he's tying it into Metal, which was a phenomenal series. So I'm very big on it. And uh, he's brought the heart and characterization back to Justice League. And I feel it's unfortunately been sorely missing for a while. So... Everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'm Hoarder Gamer, and I'll see all you guys later. Bye-bye.